Welcome to the Love Revolution broadcast, one of the miracles and wonders of the end time that um, from the desert pastures and from Pogatanga, which is so far away from the capital city of Ghana, God can create a platform and an avenue where a voice that he has planted in that wilderness can reach out to the whole world. I want to thank particularly our listeners and viewers who don't live in the northern part of Ghana, but are in the southern part of Ghana, especially far away in Europe, Eastern Europe. And um, you, you, you go to various countries and they tell you, we just watched you on GTV, we just watched you on KICC TV, we watched you on ABN television. And, and I'm like, wow, from Bogatanga. That is awesome. So all of you, I want to thank you for viewing. And as for those of you who have been supporting us financially to keep us on television and radio, I want to say thank you very much. Without you, this voice would have been in the wilderness and nobody will ever hear it. So thank you very much, my friend, for supporting me and for giving me and Rosemont the, the platform to speak what God has put in our hearts. It was a glorious time that God gave us another opportunity to host the Shepherd Summit 2016 at the National Theatre in the month of April. It, it, it was a glorious moment. Various speakers came in to bless us. You were not there, but we can share with you. Some of you were there physically, but watching it after the event gives you a double impact. So whether for the first time impact, double impact or repetition, whichever way you look at it and wherever you are coming from, this episode is going to bless you. Let me take you to the Shepherd Summit of 2016. And um, by the time we come back, the effect would have been on you. So when I say a goodbye to you, you will appreciate it very much. God bless you. Watch. Give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' most holy name, somebody shout an amen. amen. I want you to tell somebody there are many types of graces. Tell somebody the grace to preach, the grace to cast out devils, the grace to heal the sick. And say the grace to give. Grace. Giving is a grace. grace. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter number eight and the verse number one. The Bible said, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction and the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty, they abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For the, their power, I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. In so much that we desired titles that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as you abound in everything, therefore, as you abound in everything, therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. Paul is talking to the Corinthians and he's telling them, Corinthians, you know, there are many good things about you. Your faith, your utterance, your knowledge, your diligence, your love towards us. You have abounded in all these things, but I want you to abound in this grace also. And that grace is the grace of giving. At that time, the apostle Paul was busy gathering finances and blessings and food provisions 
from the rest of the world and taking it to the needy um, Christians in Jerusalem. Everywhere he went, the man of God collected gifts and offerings and then sent them to these people. And then he's now telling the Corinthians that Corinthians, there are many good things about you, but I want you to abound in this grace also. The grace of giving. But there are many times you get worried and then you are like, you know, I can't give. I'm not a giver. I, 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 I can't give what I don't have. I, I don't have enough. I cannot be a giver. And then Paul speaking to the same Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and the verse number 8. He said, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. God is able to make the grace abound towards you. Any gift God wants you to give. Any blessing God wants to give you to give. He will give you the grace to do it. One day God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, give me your son. Your holy son, Isaac. The Bible said the thing was very grievous to Abraham. Abraham took his son and was carrying the son to Mount Moriah. But we know that you cannot wait for 99 years and God will give you a son and turn around and kill that son. But Abraham just obeyed God in a way. Got on the mountaintop, put his son on the altar, Makabaha. The Bible said that God loves a cheerful giver. But at this particular time, Abraham was not a cheerful giver. He was a grieved giver. He picked up a knife to stab his son. My Bible said, God said, hold it. I love a cheerful giver. But this thing, I know you are not doing it cheerfully. Turn around. He turned around. There was a ram tied by the horns in the ticket. He said, take that one and offer it. Because this one you can do cheerfully. I know you've been giving some monies to God without cheerfulness. I know you've been giving offerings to God and paying tight and while you are doing it you are struggling but you are about to enter another season and it will be a season of not killing your Isaac but it is a season of offering the ram that God himself has provided I see you give money and virtue will not leave you I see you give an offering and you won't feel it can I prophesy to somebody that the time is coming you will give an offering of one million Ghana cities and you will not don't feel it. Come on, scream like your voice is yours. Thank God. God is able to make all grace abound so that you, not sometimes, but always having, not some sufficiency, but all sufficiency will abound not unto some work but unto every good work. I see some of you. Listen, I'm not talking about Titan offering tonight. I'm talking about one of you who can sponsor a television program all by yourself. I'm talking about somebody who will build a church building all by yourself. I'm talking about somebody who we will say we are coming to the national theater and you say the bill is on me and we said this is the sound how much it will cost you said the bill is on me I'm talking about somebody who will go to your church and tell your pastor the salary of all the workers in one year two years three years in this church is on me I pay every salary from the pastor to the laborer in the church in the name of Jesus receive the that grace I said receive that grace receive that grace people preaching is a grace casting out devils is a grace but there is another grace listen may you become a financier of the kingdom of God may, may you become a sponsor of the kingdom of God ah, yeah. tonight I feel like put some financial power some financial fire in somebody's spirit and thou shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant receive it he said I pray that you will abound in this grace also and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always always every 
every day. Uh, yeah. Can I tell you this? If you quote goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Who is going to enable that goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life? Because we know that God doesn't drop the goodness and heaven direct from heaven. If goodness and mercy have to follow you all the days of your life, then somebody has to ensure that that goodness and mercy, God is using that person to enable that goodness and mercy follow you. Therefore, I pray that if there is somebody who God tells a person, goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of their life. May God use you to ensure that every day those people will not lack anything. So when God told all of us, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, it applied to the prophet Elijah. And God said, Elijah, the raven has stopped coming. The brook chariot has dried up. Now arise and go to the gate of Zarephtah. There is a widow woman there and she will take care of you. The Bible said as long as that woman of God committed herself and said, I will take care of this prophet all the days of his life. Her oil never ran dry. And the flower never got exalted. That got exhausted. I see somebody here. Your money will never finish. You will never lack a house. You will never lack a land. You will never lack a car. There will be no lack in your life. Because there is something God has promised. That goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of your life. And are you here? I hear you say, Lord, if that man of God should never lack anything, I elect myself. I obey you. I will be the one you will use. Make me the widow of Zerefta. Make me the man you can use. Make me the woman you can use. Come on, shout a yes and praise God. Thank you. God is able to make all grace abound. If you can locate a man or a woman who God will connect your destiny to and say this man and this woman because he's a man of God and she's a woman of God I have decided that as long as I live this man of God or woman of God will never go hungry. Will never go naked. For their sake, God will make all grace abound. Ah, yeah. And this man called the Apostle Paul was walking about on the face of the earth. Oh, Obre. You read 2 Corinthians 11, you see the man suffered. All manner of tribulations and afflictions. Then some people called the Philippians decided from the book of Philippians 4 Paul talked about ever since I departed from Macedonia and I began to preach this gospel no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving but you only you opened a debit and credit account with me it was a give and take affair because you Corinthians you 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 Macedonians you Philippians because you see when Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said I want you to follow the example of the believers in Macedonia Philippi was the capital of Macedonia so when he was talking about the churches in Macedonia he was talking about the Philippians and I love it when in Philippians chapter 4 the verse number 17 he said I'm teaching you about this giving and receiving not because I desire a gift but that fruit may abound to your account I'm not just receiving an offering because I'm in need I just want you to be blessed there is no time you give to God and you don't receive back I pray that God will give you the revelation of giving. May God give you the revelation of giving. So Paul said, not that I desire a gift, but I desire the fruit. Not that I desire a gift, but I desire the fruit may abound to your account. Then he said, give to me 
thinking that you are helping me. Anytime you give to a man of God thinking you are helping him, you have forfeited your reward. Humble yourself. Or oh, the day I stop giving tight to this church, the tight will collapse you. You yourself, you are a tight. Listen. In a time God calls you to be a giver, he has given you opportunity and privilege. There are times I give an offering to God and finish and I start crying like a baby. Because I remember when I'm driving through the streets of Bogatanga, I show my wife all the bowlers on which I used to pick aluminum tin before I could get food to eat. I told our church two weeks ago, I said there were times I'll go to the bowler struggling to see what I could find and mad men were there looking for something. I remember there was a time I saw something. I wanted to take it. A madman took it. And I was not bossing the madman to give it to me. Finally, he gave it to me. Because at least I wasn't mad, so I was more sensible. <laughs> Listen, it's an honor. Not because I desire a gift. But I desire that fruit should abound to your account. But I have all. I abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the gifts that were sent to me from you. A gift that was a sweet smell, sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing unto God. Verse 19 is the one you know. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm about to preach you out of greed. Preach you out of stinginess. Preach you out of hard-heartedness. Preach you out of a spirit that has inverted, reversed, capsized your Bible and is now teaching you that it is more blessed to receive than to give. You have your Bible turned upside down. The right Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. So, this giving, when I give, what happens? Three things. You are preparing the man of God for ministry. Number two, you are positioning yourself around God. Number three, you are putting pressure on kingdom power to answer your questions. Yeah. Number one, when you give, you are preparing a man of God for ministry. You see, when the Bible said, sanctified and meet for the master's good use and prepared unto every good work. You see, the thing that prepares a man of God for every good work is not only speaking in tongues, prayer. When you go to a man of God's house and he's preparing for meeting, when he's praying, they ask, what is he doing? They say, he's preparing for service. I will tell you when he's preparing some of the things he does. But when I'm preparing for service and I'm praying, one of the things I say, Rika Bahatas, Father, move in the finances of the church today. I pray that you will give your people a seat to sow. How many pa pastors have prayed like that before? So that is one of the preparation. So assuming you knock the door of the man of God and you say, Ko -ko -ko, and then the man of God says, uh -huh, what can I do for you? You say, Daddy, I just brought you a seed of 7,000 Ghana cities so that today it can help the church work. In fact, you have prepared him so that preparation will not become a prayer topic. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody shout preparation. He said, Paul said, I have all. I abound. I am full. Having received of Epaphroditus. I, I have everything I need. I have all. I abound. I am full. But you know, in our generation, we get angry when a man of God has all. 
We get angry when he abounds. We get angry when he's full. But the thing is that because of the work the person does, because of the anointing he carries, because of the grace that is upon him, when he has all and he abounds and he's full, he's prepared unto every good work. Now, the reason for the person's ministry, the reason for the person's anointing is you yourself. That means when the man of God comes to church and he has all and he's full and he abounds, his ministry will bless you. But when he comes to church and the man is confused and he's frustrated and he's very angry, that day, everybody will receive the anger. But may God use you to give a man of God everything he needs so when he's standing in front of you he is only a blessing without worry without worry when you give a man of God an iPad you are preparing him for ministry when you give a man of God a, a software which has Bible encyclopedias and dictionary you are preparing him for ministry if you give a man of God food, you are prepared him for ministry. You give him a bed to sleep on. Aya, Shunammite. Give the man of God food. Give the man of God a bed. Give the man of God a place to rest. He said, let us do it for this man. I perceive he's a holy man of God. When the man of God was comfortable and he had all, he abounded, he was full. He said, call me the Shunammite. You have cared for us with all this care. What shall be done for this woman? The woman stood in front of the man of God. He said, about this season, according to the time of life, you shall have a baby. Cast your bread upon the waters. Thou shalt find it that the men days uh, you give a man of God money you give a man of God food you give a man of God a house and the man prepares the word of God the anointing increases upon his life the spirit of God is upon him he is not worried about anything uh, be careful for nothing but in everything uh, by prayer and supplication let your request be made known unto God uh, when you bless a man of God uh, you have taken worry out of his life when you bless a woman of God uh, you have taken worry out of her life if you bless the church you are taking worry out of the church if you bless the church you are taking confusion out of the church because the Christian women and the Hellenists they will not complain again because they've been left out of the daily ministration whenever you increase your offering in a church and you give your tithes in your church you are reducing confusion you are eliminating trouble you are bringing all things that are needed and your pastor is freed in order to do the ministry when a pastor has no money problems the man is at his best the woman is at his best when, when they minister at their best you will be the one that will be blessed so you know what ladies and gentlemen when the Shunammite blessed Elisha she was preparing a man who can prophesy and say about this season according to the time of life I I prophesy if I was looking for food I cannot prophesy if I was looking for a house I cannot prophesy if I was looking for money I cannot prophesy but because somebody took care of my food and somebody took care of my house and somebody took care of my car I can prophesy I have all I am full I am bound I don't need anything so I can supply your need somebody they bless me so that I can be a blessing to you. Come on, scream like a voice of yours. Pray. So you see, the reason for verse 18 is not Paul. Welcome back. What a privilege, what an honor to serve God in the capacity in which we do. Sometimes when I see even three people sitting in front of me and I'm talking to them, I'm like, wow, is this me? Because many years ago, I never knew that I would get the opportunity to even carry a Bible and to preach to somebody. And because the word of God was so far from me, we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and from the commonwealth of God's kingdom. I believe your life has been blessed. You have been touched. There has been an impact in your life. I pray go and do likewise touch another person's life let the influence of the love revolution continue 
May this fire spread never to be quenched. And I pray in the name of Jesus that when Jesus returns the second time, he will find his love in your heart. May the Lord mightily bless you and please don't miss the next episode of The Love Revolution. I love you very much and always remember to support a good cause. Bye-bye now. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere.